Do you see this man? At first glance, he is just an ordinary English sir who looks at the camera very defiantly. In reality, he is an inventor of the first car in the world, which is a great-grandfather of the Fords and Maybachs. The name of this genius is Nicolas Joseph Cugnot. Nicolas Cugnot was born in 1700. It's not a joke, 1725 in France. He put on the uniform, took part in the Seven Years' War, left the army, and noticed that he was a 40-year-old man. And such things often happen in the lives of many people, born, studied something, kissed, and surprisingly found out they reached 40 and seemed like they did nothing in their lives. Well, Nicola actually had a midlife crisis, but didn't despair. He began to think about what to invent, and one day got an idea. What if I invent a wagon, which will move without horses? Oh, uh, wait, Mr. Cugno, it's still the 18th century. And? Do you really decide to make a wagon which will move by itself, without horses or animal power? Sure, it'll move with the power of water. Water? Water. Mr. Cugno, are you okay? Unfortunately, that time psychiatry didn't exist in France, otherwise Nicolas would have become one of the first patients. Mr. Cugno was adamant about creating a wagon which would move by itself. He began with searching for funding as the car couldn't be created without money, for the needs of the army. Cugno began to search for investors. He conducted negotiations with one official after another and suddenly visited the military minister. And this man complained to the inventor, Nicola, our country has significant lack of horses. It's not a joke. We need horses to transport projectiles, cannons, and artillery in general. We build horse farms all around the country, but these animals don't want to have foals. Moreover, we have to spend a large part of our budget on horses. They need saddles, harnesses, and oat to fuel them. Wait. If you want, I can produce a wagon which will move using water as the source of power. Water? Yes, water. That's all? This way, Mr. Cugno got funding. Duke Choiseul himself became the patron of the inventor, and this man was the head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Navy Department. Anyway, he was a tough guy. There were also several generals, so this business got real investors. And what did that mean? Right. This was for the end of nerve cells, tons of sleepless nights, and increased risk of heart attack. But there wasn't another choice. With great power comes great responsibility. Nicolas began his work. He drew, counted, and corrected day and night. Finally, in 1769, appeared the first construction which Cugno named Fire Wagon. It sounds like some Greek or Roman thing, and not only sounds like, but also looks like it. Yes, this middle-aged catapult is not a Ferrari, and its speed is just three miles an hour, but at those times, that was a great achievement. The principle of work of this vehicle was specific, to put it mildly. There was a boiler with heated water. This water vaporized and steam filled the cylinders. Pistons moved as they were under pressure and launched other parts of the mechanism. And the vehicle moved, everybody was happy. And only the driver wasn't having fun, as he had to stop every 12 minutes and make fire above the boiler. To tell the truth, Nicolas Cugnot himself was the driver. That's why a decision was made to correct the shortage. In 1770, Nicolas reconstructed his self-propelled wagon. It still looked like a catapult, but the furnace was installed inside the boiler. And indeed, by that time, those vehicles were the progenitor of modern cars. For example, look at the front-wheel drive. Everybody knows what a front-wheel drive is, right? To make a long story short, the idea is that when the front wheels move due to the work of the engine, the rear wheels just follow the moving parts. Viewers who know how cars work, well done. Others can just enjoy the video. Uh, by the way, you see this tube? No, that's not the exhaust pipe. This is a big cannon which was hanging under the bottom of the vehicle. Now you can imagine that Nicolas Cugno had also invented a tank, but unfortunately the cannon hadn't shot and just hung out as a watch pendulum. And what do you think about it? It's worth noting that this vehicle had two rear wheels and one front wheel, and it was a steering wheel. Somehow, this crazy tricycle could move forward and backward and even sustain the balance with its four-ton weight. Well, almost. It overturned. In 1770, the first tests were planned. Great number of people were gathered on the streets of Paris so they could look at the self-propelled miracle with their own eyes. The miracle moved in front of them, but not for long. The wagon went a bit, and then with all its power, struck the wall. And after this, the trials were finished. So what happened? Why was a well-designed machine suddenly unraveled? There were two reasons. First, the control system jammed. Secondly, this wagon didn't have brakes at all. Influential patrons of Mr. Cugno tried to procure him one more chance. There is a letter to the head of the military department which contained words like, let's lock Versailles Avenue down and test this vehicle in secrecy. Oh, well, the terrain there isn't smooth, so let's prove that the wagon won't break down. It'll be okay, won't it? And nobody answered this letter. 
First trials became the last one, but it was just the beginning of deep crisis in the life of Nicola Cugno. Nicola Cugno had been repairing his car for one year. During this time, his investors lost their influence and the project ultimately died. The vehicle itself wasn't a catastrophe, but had all the chances to become one. The weight of this wagon was four tons. It moved slower than a turtle. Shortly on the battlefield, all soldiers could move forward and this clunker still stayed far in the rear. This vehicle couldn't keep balance at all and different ravines were insurmountable obstacles for it. Moreover, the driver had to add fuel to the boiler to prevent the vehicle from shutting down. And what do you do if bombs or other projectiles burst around you? Or for example, there's no more water. Maybe during peacetime, a vehicle of this size could become the favorite toy of those in power. King Louis XV could drive it. There were songs and music all around, but alas, in wartime, this invention couldn't accomplish what it had to do. And now I can tell you thanks for watching. Like this video and subscribe to our channel. Go feed my cat, but not yet. The story hasn't finished. This invention impressed King Louis, and he decided to give Cugno the status of honorary French retiree. The inventor was appointed 600 livres pension. Actually, it was mere pennies, and it was hard to survive every year even with this money. It can't be helped. As people say, a beggar can never be bankrupt. But sweet life had just begun. In 1789, the French Revolution broke out. That time, the government lost the reins of power and people started to make chaos. Establishment quickly left the country and common people began to rule the state. Well, rule's a bit strong. First, they began to beat each other. One of them wanted to get power, another one wanted to become the owner of his neighbor's house, and some people did whatever came to mind at the moment. Revolutionary courts had appeared and people began to remember each other with all their sins. Gallows, decapitations, nobody could stay aside from this movement. Our hero was also a part of these events. One day, someone knocked on the door of the inventor and said, are you a member of the opposition? Who? You are against the government. Well, guys, wait a minute. You are against the people. Guys, probably you have the wrong address. You are a traitor of the state and will be exiled to the end of your life. Guys, wait, you didn't listen. Unfortunately, that day, guys were in a bad mood and Nicola fell victim to repression. Poor old man was deprived of welfare and exiled to Brussels, where he lived in poverty. Exile isn't the most terrible thing, as many people were executed. Nicola got off easy. Phew. Years later, Napoleon Bonaparte himself returned Cugno. Then, Nicola died in Paris, leaving a small part of his happy or maybe not so happy retirement. No matter what anyone says, the Cugno wagon is actually a cool invention. Just imagine, in the 18th century, there were a lot of horses on the streets. They run around, defecate, smell, and try to be like their owners. And suddenly, one crazy man gets an idea to create a wagon which will move by itself, as if under the spell from Harry Potter. If Mr. Cugno lived a couple centuries earlier, he would have been burned alive. Fortunately, it was luck for him to live at the time that he did. Nicola Cugna certainly was a genius. But just imagine, he invented such a big vehicle without any basis in the century when there weren't any cars at all. Unfortunately, the Cugno business didn't have any successors. Due to the events of the revolution, the self-propelled wagon was forgotten very soon, as at that time people were killing each other with all possible enthusiasm and that was much more interesting and history shows there is nothing more interesting than fighting all day long. That's why the prototype of the wagon was lost, but not for long. When the revolution finished in 1800, the wagon was found in the warehouse. Then it was repaired and delivered to the National Conservatory of Arts and Crafts. And the first car in the world is stored there to this day. Visitors can look, but it is forbidden to touch it or they'll be punished. Unfortunately, nobody used the invention of Nicola Cunha. When he was released from prison, other countries had already made their own vehicle, in China, for example, they created a small steam-powered car, but its length was just uh, 25 inches. It was a toy for the emperor. <laughs> Much more serious inventions were made in Great Britain, where they created a cab which used steam to propel it. A bit later, in 1789, in the United States invented their own vehicle. And what was it? So, was the Cuneo wagon useless? Didn't Nicola work all his life for nothing? Anybody can think as he wants, but in my opinion, inventing a car in the 18th century really is a cool thing. Frenchmen also think so and are very proud of their inventor. In 2010, they created a new wagon. It moved along the streets, fumed, and there's a video where you can see how this vehicle almost killed a crowd of women. But it's unbelievable that this thing can move even after 250 years. Now a new wagon is stored in the inventor's home village, and his name is remembered through the centuries. Let's not forget about the good guy, Nicolas Cugnot.